Wanuna. And tonight, we are very keen on making sure that you out there as the voter, potential voter, are very well adverse and well known and educated in terms of the things you need to know towards the general election. It's just five days to go to the general election, 4th of March. Kenyans will be casting the very important vote for whoever it is, their choices in the March 4th election. Tonight I'm joined by Sunil Sher, consultant in policy and governance in my extreme right. And on my mm -hmm. immediate right is Jeff Gadaka, reverend in the Anglican Church. We're glad you could both join us tonight. And really this is to educate our voters, civic education, to, to ensure that everybody that's out there has an understanding of what is critical to understand in these last moments as we head to the general election. What are the steps to follow? What are the need to knows? Mm -hmm. Critical ones, yes. small as they may seem to some, but to some very important, mm -hmm. so that we may ensure we have a, a peaceful, a fabulous election, that we may have a next a, a leadership that will lead the, election, the country to the next uh, a step that everybody wants to see it. And Sunil Shah, great to see you, and Gadakar as well. Um, the first question, what time, of course, is critical for everybody to know, do we expect the polling stations to be opened and closed come 4th of March, Monday? Today is Tuesday, mm. Monday, next week. Mm. By the time like this, I think everybody will be watching on their TV stations, the results <laughs> as they stream in. Yeah, exactly, but in the yes. morning, what time do people start streaming into the polling stations? Well, uh, thank you very much. It's Monday. And uh, the time that the polling stations are going to be opened officially is 6. Yes. And uh, therefore, it is important for the Wananchi and especially the voters to understand that. So you can go as early as 6, and the presenting officer will stand there at the opening of the polling station mm -hmm. and will announce now the polling station is open. Right. It's supposed to close at 5. However, if for any cause they may not be able to open at six, they will extend the time that uh, that they had not opened. Yes, and I like that you clarify that because that's an issue of con contention uh -huh. with very many voters. Sometimes mm -hmm. there'll be one issue or the other. Mm -hmm. Of course, human beings involved in this process, so that's bound to happen. But that the process, depending on the time the polling stations open, mm -hmm. the time then will be expanded depending on the exact time. Yeah, and not only that. If there are still some people on the queue by the five p by the five p m yes those cannot be chased away all right they will be allowed to to vote okay yeah so Nilsha, what is the process of voting this voter has woken up bright and early six five okay six a m seven a m <laughs> they're in the polling station hopefully let's take this voter through the process obviously when they come in um Hopefully the polling station is open, yes. the queues also happening, people are being queued up into their respective uh, polling streams, we call them, uh, they also call polling stations within the centre. Uh, the first thing that needs to happen is the presiding officer has to open all the ballot boxes, right. display them to the people that they are empty, there is nothing inside, like ballots have not been stuffed in, then the political party agents are also there, the candidate agents and the boxes will have to be sealed before the voting actually starts. Mm. There are special seals. There is the IBC seals, which uh, will be put onto the boxes, and the political party agents, the candidate agents, also put in their seals. And then the voting can begin. So the first thing that will happen is, uh, once the person, the voter, actually goes inside the polling station room, his finger is checked that whether it has ink on it, whether he has gone somewhere and cast his vote. Before the, Yeah, then he'll not be allowed, obviously. But if he doesn't have the ink, then his ID card is actually checked. Whether he is the person, um, the, the clerk will actually check that. If he is the person, he has to go to the next clerk, who will now, he'll be required, the voter will be required to put his fingers on the, on the machine, the scanning machine, so that his fingerprints, his uh, biometric uh, facial features can be matched with the record when he actually went to register. All those, those records were actually taken. Mm -hmm. If they match, his name comes up, the clerk will speak out his name loudly, and it will be cancelled from the mm -hmm. register that now he's here and he's going to vote, so that he cannot go back to another station to actually cast his vote again. 
So the, once the system cancels him out, he cannot actually go back right. and what. Yeah. Then he goes to the next uh, clerk who is going to give him the first two ballots. The next one, another two ballots and the fifth clerk with another two ballots. Okay. So finally he ends up with six ballots. Six. Obviously the ballots, the person must check at the back of the ballots that there is an IEBC stamp on that. If, he, if there is no stamp, he actually has to tell them that, look, this ballot is not proper. Can you put the IEBC stamp at the back of it? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, your ballot actually gets invalidated. Mm -hmm. So it's very important for the voters to actually see that there is an IEBC stamp. stamp. Then he moves to the polling booths, which will be on the side, and he can actually go and begin to start making his choices on the ballot papers. We will talk about that a little bit more. Yeah. Finally, when he has done that in, in the uh, prescribed manner, then he can actually go and put the ballots into the ballot boxes. But in case any of the ballot, he spoils any of the ballots, he's not sure that the mark has been put properly or right. he's put into the wrong candidate and he wants to change his mind, then that ballot can be actually exchanged. He has to go back, give it back to the, the clerk that gave him the, that particular ballot and gets another ballot paper. Once he has done that, then the ballots have, need to be put in their appropriate ballot boxes. How does he know that? The leads right. will be colored according to the ballot to paper. The ballot boxes. Yes. And of course, as you mentioned earlier, the electronic process of this is only involved when it comes to the voter identification. Yes. When it comes to balloting itself, uh, Reverend, it's really the physical manual mm -hmm. on paper, writing, ticking or cancelling or a dot will get to what <laughs> marks you put on it. But that's not electronic because the IBC no. has been very cru uh, out, you know, outspoken yes. on how exactly this is happening. The electronic process and this is just the ident identification and not the voting. Yeah, and you see, when uh, you have put your finger on, on the machine, yes. it's uh, just actually to identify, identify you. And know that now this is actually the person. And not only that, the clerk who is uh, manning that machine right. will shout your name in order that everybody uh, knows that this is Sophia. Yes, and, Sophia uh, Wanuna. Uh, Sophia Wanuna, <laughs> yes. because uh, somebody else may pretend it to be you. Right. So uh, that is the purpose of that machine. Okay. But when it comes to marking the ballot paper, we, it, it is very clearly said that you put either a tick or you put an X or you even put a dot. A dot. And make sure that it is on the line where you see oh. the name and the picture and the box of that candidate. And I like that you're saying that, mm. uh, Reverend, because what happens sometimes, you know, somebody thinking from at home, they'll come in, they are all these positions, they'll put a tick on whoever they prefer, and then an X on everybody else saying, I don't want this one, I don't you want see, this one. You see, <laughs> that is what happens where, when and that's people want to spoil for you. Exactly. They tell you the person that you don't want, you, you, put, put, an, an you X. put an X. Yes. And then the one you, you want, you put a, a, a tick. tick. Yes. So that is already a spell. But ballot an X paper. is also yeah. voting for somebody. So it's either an yeah. a tick, mm -hmm. yeah. an X, mm -hmm. or a dot. Yeah, then the other thing that we need to uh, explain to the voter is that the voter must acquaint himself or herself with the colors. Right. Because, uh, uh, like on Sunday, there was that MOOC uh, election. Yes. And those colors, if you are not very careful, you might find yourself putting the ballot, the, the ballot paper in the wrong ballot box. Exactly. And you see the, the ballot paper that is in the wrong ballot box is actually a stray vote, and it will not count. Because when they start counting, mm -hmm. the other one is somewhere else, and that will, that, that, that will be lost. Then the other thing that we need to explain is when you are putting that ballot paper in the box, you make sure that you fold it left to right, or left left to right or right to left. It yeah. should be like this. Broken. Yeah. Like that. Like that. Okay. And then you put it that way. Inside. Don't do it top up. Yeah. Because what will happen is that if you have marked here, and then you put it this way, 
that mark can also go to another box. Yes. Then that, that ballot box is, I mean, that ballot paper is and, spoiled. And Sunil, in the eventuality, of course, you've mentioned the very importance of putting the colors to each because the ballot papers will match the, ba the, the, the colors of the ballot boxes, the yes. cover lids as well. As well. Yes. So if you put the wrong ballot paper in the wrong, you know, box, that is in itself a spoiled? It's a spoiled ballot. Yes. It's, a, it's invalidated. Yeah. It's not actually a spoiled. Spoiled are the ones you're given back okay. when you made a mistake. Rejected. This one, it will be invalidated. Uh, it will not even be counted at all. So voters, please make sure that you put it in the correct box. If you are not, if the voter is not uh, sure what to do, he can always ask the presiding officer. Yeah. And I think voters don't have to worry about anything. If they are not sure, be courageous enough to ask. There is nothing to worry about, you know, when you actually go there. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will not know. A lot of people will be actually voting the first time okay. as well. It's a new so, thing. you know, if you're not sure, please ask. Then again, we have this issue about uh, uh, voters who are illiterate, who probably cannot see, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. So they need, need to be help. assisted. Yes. They can either be assisted by the presiding officer or they can take one of their friends or a relative so that they can be assisted. Obviously, the friend will have to sign an oath of secrecy mm -hmm. so that he doesn't divulge the information uh, that which candidate did that particular voter preferred. Yes. Uh, that has to remain a secret because this is a secret ballot. ballot. You cannot go there out there and start broadcasting to everybody that who did you vote for. Okay. Let it remain a secret and that's it. It's, it's actually uh, more or less a rule of IEBC that do not disclose that. Um, information All right. so they can be assisted yes and of course we're voting president governor the senator mm -hmm. women rep mm -hmm. country rep mm -hmm. uh, and of course the county MP, assembly, county assembly rep mm -hmm. there's a member of parliament and there's women representative mm -hmm. six mm -hmm. ballots been cast mm -hmm. at the same time it's a huge election mm -hmm. and one of the things that has come into focus in this last days leading up to the election is the voter turnout of course you have the two leading candidates and they look it seems like a neck and neck kind of a race Very but much. reverend in terms of the voter turnout which uh you know the iebc and all the civil society civil, civil society has been coming out to urge members of the public to come out and vote because that will make a difference why is it that important the voter turnout people to come out on the fourth march to vote uh, th thank you very much sophia well, this is important because there is a saying that Bad governments, bad leaders are voted in by people who do not vote. Right. Because once you have refused to go and vote, a good leader, mm -hmm. then uh, the others will just go and vote the bad one. And therefore, it is very important for every uh, potential voter to know that your vote counts. And once you decide to stay at the home, you have not made a decision about who should lead you. You have not made a decision of what kind of government you want, what kind of policies you want, what kind of development you want. Right. But n democracy is about numbers. And therefore, it is important for everybody to come out and vote that time. Because now when we come to the president, it is not the simple majority exactly. as we had it before. before. Now it is... 50 plus one. Mm. He must gain that. If we don't get that, then we will go for a runoff. Mm. Uh, so it is important for everybody to come up. And not only that, it is important that we, you as a voter, you encourage other people also to come. Mm. If they are invalid, try to, cut, to, 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 to give them a lift so that uh, they come and uh, they, they vote. And not only that, we must ensure that as we are voting, we are exercising this in a free and a fair manner. And we must make sure that we do not involve ourselves with things like bribery, with things eh, that you are bribed so that you can go and vote for so and so. Right. And uh, we must ensure that there is peace in every way and psych our mind that 
peace is what we want. And, and I like to bring in the pre peace aspect because in the last couple of days we've seen in the social media a lot of that campaign going on, you know, a lot of people going forward with the peace message. We've seen the prayers in mm -hmm. Uru Park and the presidential candidates also getting involved. You know, there's a lot of focus and I think of course based on what we saw in 2007, Pretty nobody much. wants to go yeah. back to that. What do you make of these peace messages? What do you make of these prayers coming now? I think, thanks, Sophia, for that. I think in 2007, what happened was actually not because of people wanted that. It was because of the political scenario. Right. And obviously, political scenario is actually set by the political candidates. Mm -hmm. um, in that manner, what ex exactly, uh, you know, with the peaceful prayers, uh, and I think even uh, M. Kenya Daima, they've been having these uh, peace, peaceful elections as well. Yes. It's been going on for the last whole one year. And the idea is that if the politicians are seen to be praying together, if the message continually goes out, then people should not get influenced by the actions of the politicians. It is each and every citizen's duty to have that prayer within him and make sure that whatever they do during that election day, mm -hmm. the E-Day, is peaceful. Um, it's, it's also important that, and, and this message has been going about quite a bit, that encourage all the people to come and vote. And once you cast your vote, go out of the polling station. You are not allowed to stay inside. Go home, be peaceful, watch, watch the results, and, and if you want to continue praying, do that also. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's going to be more or less like a holiday. Right. Um, and Reverend also said that um, people should be allowed to go and vote. They should not be hindered. So whether it's it's a husband, you know, telling the wife, allow them to allow them to vote. Yeah. And it's supposed to an be employee. a free vote. Mm -hmm. An employee as well. An employer cannot. It's an actually an offense to hinder an employee on e day to actually go and vote. Right. He, he he must be allowed to vote. Again, his salary should not be uh, no, exactly. deducted because yeah. of that one day. It's, it's, it's again an offense. So employers out there, you know, employees need to go out and what? It is also important, the question that you asked, Reverend, that why should everybody go out and what? Yeah. One of the things that happened was we were expecting almost about 18, 20 million voters to be registered. Eventually, we registered about 14 million plus. Million, yeah. So there is already a reduction. And it's very important that for democracy to be uh, validated for this country, for that sovereign right that each and every citizen has, right. he must go out there and exercise his duty to elect the leaders that we want. Otherwise, after the election has come and somebody doesn't go out to vote, he or she should not complain, oh, what kind of leaders do we have? So exactly. it's, it's taking ownership of yeah. the outcome of, 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 the, elections. of the election. That, that's very important. Okay. And I think that, that peace prayer message mm -hmm. has emphasized so much on that, that no matter what happens, everybody has a right. If your candidate doesn't win, let the one who has won continue his job. But then we also tend to forget that we are not just electing the ruler or the president, or the governor. We are also putting in office the opposition, which exactly. also needs to perform. Which will keep into account the leadership. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So wherever your, your chosen candidate falls. Uh, you know, falls, whether it's in the opposition or in, in office, it should not matter, because in both areas, both sides, they have to perform a critical their role. job. And, and Reverend, I bring you into this because this is a closely contested presidency. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, we've been seeing the numbers coming from the pollsters. Yeah. It's tight. Yeah. And whoever wins this election, yes, they will perhaps be leading the majority, but there will also be a big chunk of Kenyans yeah. who will not have voted the main, will have voted for the opposition, mm -hmm. but they'll have to lead all these people. What is your message to Kenya as a whole, especially to those who will not have voted in the person who's elected president? President. Yeah, th th this is what it is. First, it is important for those who are vying for different seats right. to seek their followers that an election is just a contest. And a cont in a contest, there must be a loser and a winner. And a winner. True. So the mind must be psyched that way, that as we go to this election, this is what it is. Chochote chaweza kutokea. 
And when somebody is psyched that way, yes. then he or she will be able to accept the result. Yes. Therefore, for peace to prevail, mm -hmm. is that we should be ready to accept the results as they, they have come. come. Yes. And they agree and say, this is the will of God. Mm -hmm. Because the will of God is also expressed through the will of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, that, that needs to be done. The other thing is that as we talk about this message of peace, because this is the most important thing that we need to understand here, then we should know once the elections are over, my neighbor remains my neighbor. Mm -hmm. My brother remains my brother. Mm. And life must go on. But it, we should not make sure, we should not uh, make elections to be something that is going to get the end of our lives. Our lives we should do or die. Then, yeah, do or die. Yes. Then the other thing is, is that whoever has lost, not only accepting, but agreeing to work with the one who has won. Mm. And this one who has won also to ensure that he or she embraces the, the other one. Who and then won? they continue mm. and you see what a wonderful country yes. we have. So Nilsha, so in essence what we're saying in this discussion with what the Reverend has said is that for those you know, involved, the, those, those participating in this, the contestants, especially the, the, the two, to have concession speeches as we come to the election and you know victory speeches in essence so that because that plays a huge role when you can come forth to your supporters and yes. say we lost yes. it's okay yes. kenya can move forward considering defeat yes i think it's absolutely important it also shows that the character of the person who lost is upright he should not go out and incite his waters and actually go and say um we actually want you to now go and riot. So it's very important for the loser to concede defeat, and publicly. Um, and also, uh, the winner needs to also appreciate the competition that, the, that, that has been in the elections, and appreciate the performance of the loser, mm -hmm. and not say sort of cheekily or anything like that, that right. look, you lost, because that, that doesn't create harmony. Um, so our appeal to, to the politicians and the candidates out there is also, appreciate each other and then the voters also will appreciate the outcome of the uh, elections so it's, it's critical and i think to have both the parties the loser and the winner mm -hmm. to actually make that public addresses immediately once the results have been confirmed and announced exactly and today i attended a press conference where the au observers led by of course yeah. uh, joachim chisano from a mozambican president and one of the questions that was put to him was what do kenyans now do of course in the face of the alleged intimidation or threats coming from you know the western countries mm -hmm. saying that there are consequences to choices and that kenyans need to be very aware of this as they vote in the next election and what he said is what you know Kenyans go out to vote for whoever you think will take and progress the country to the next step what in your view and I know you're an election expert the role of uh, observers we have the election AU observers mm -hmm. here EU observers yes. local and international yeah. ones as well and of course the media will be there as well mm -hmm. it's an election that is close closely been watched what is their role in essence it's a very important role. In fact, most of the elections, the observers are just come at the end of the elections. But their role actually starts way back from the registration process. Mm -hmm. They have to ensure that the whole electoral process, from the registration to the nominations, to the uh, electoral body nominations, right. the uh, pol political party performances, mm -hmm. is all free, fair, impartial, according to the law. So there is, they do a very comprehensive assessment of the legal framework of the elections. So make sure that the legal framework is correct. Mm -hmm. Everybody is abiding by that. They scrutinize the election uh, body, the IEBC in, the, in our case. They also look after what the security agencies, how capable they have they been. Have they been doing their job properly? Will they do their job properly during the election day as well? Mm -hmm. They focus on any hot spots, any violence that comes about, go to the reasons of that violence so that recommendations can be made of what needs to change in the future so that we do not have the repeat of those 
that kind of violence. They also look at the actual voting process and make sure it is free, it's fair. People are able to vote whoever they want they according to their um, intellectual thinking. Yes. Um, obviously, people do not need to vote with their hearts, but they also need to vote with their, with their minds. Uh, minds as well. Uh, mm -hmm. That's important. They need to know what are the agendas, and hence we had the presidential debates and also the other candidate debates as right. well. I like that you bring that in because Reverend, one of also the other things that the African Union uh, election observer mission was saying is that what makes them so confident of a difference in terms of the electoral process with this election compared to the last one is that, that several um, changes and tra you know transitions that have been seen not only in the judiciary the police service as well what for you gives you confidence that this election will be smooth sailing and that Kenya will be you know poised for a new dawn yeah yeah thank you very much Sophia what uh, first I would want to say is that uh, in Kenya there is also uh, an observation group Right. Domestic observers, Correct. and uh, in which we have uh, what we call the election observation group, and we have been observing the, the the process of electioneering since the beginning, the registration of voters, as, uh, as he has saying, and the campaigns. We have been observing all those things, mm -hmm. and whenever we would find that there is something amiss or something needs to be corrected, we would go slowly to IBC and see. Can you also put this in, uh, in the proper perspective? Or if we see that probably this has not been done, we would go and do that. Therefore, the, it's not only the international observers, even domestic observers are very important. Mm -hmm. Now, when the observers, whether domestic or international, have finished their work, they write a report. That report is supposed to go to the election management body to help the election management body mm -hmm. to be Embu now even to prepare for the forthcoming uh, elections. The next election. Yeah, and I want to just uh, give you a small example. Once I was uh, observing elections in the Gambia, and one of the things that we saw was that they were counting their uh, ballot papers in, a, in another place. And we advised them, why don't you count them at the polling, at the polling station? Because they don't use ballot papers, they use the mum. You know those things that play with the with the children called the uh, um, mambos. The mambos. Yeah, the mambos. <laughs> they are the ones that they put in a thing. <laughs> so we told them, if you go with this thing uh, and you are transporting it somewhere, it can fall, and then nobody will know which was which belonged to somebody. And I was happy that when I went there back again, right. they had adopted that. So, election observers are very crucial crucial to the electoral process, uh, process. Right. and this is the a role that they, they do and they do it uh, religiously. All right, so now as we bring this discussion to a close almost, um, after the vote has been cast, we've talked about what time the, uh, you know, the, the polling stations are opening at about 6 a.m. and of course if that is delayed it will be compensated at the mm -hmm. end of yes. you know, the voting process depending on how many people are still on the queue by 5 p.m. But what happens after they close? What then, in terms of counting who's involved mm -hmm. in the process, what exactly happens? Obviously, the voters would have gone yes. because they are not supposed to stay within. Right. You still have the media, you have the security agencies, you have the observers, you have the IEBC officials. Mm -hmm. Immediately after that, the boxes have to be sealed. Right. The slit where you put the ballot also has to be sealed. And they are gathered together from all the different streams into one room where the returning officer is. They'll be emptied, the ballot boxes, mm -hmm. the counting actually starts. Um, the, it's a process, and I think it'll be in most of the polling sessions, the media is going to broadcast live how the counting is happening. Each and every ballot has to be shown to uh, people uh, who are present mm -hmm. and has to be put on the correct pile for that particular candidate. Um, if during that time there are certain ballots which do not have the mark properly in its box, right. it's overlapping, then that is called a disputed exactly. ballot. So it is kept aside. It is not rejected completely. Mm -hmm. uh, if the political party agents or the candidate agents do not have an objection and they can clearly s say this is for that particular candidate, mm -hmm. then it is included in the county. If there is an objection, then they are not counted. 
then you will obviously have the rejected words which are not marked properly or they have more than one mark uh, or you know uh, any other mistake or is torn uh, so it's very important you know like what Reverend said fold it properly and make sure it's not even torn if a ballot gets torn get another one mm. before you put it into the ballot box uh, so the counting starts once the counting has finished and if all the political party agents have no objection at all then that is the end of counting if they have an objection and they say no we need these words counted again because i think we made a mistake somewhere then the ballots are counted again and between the two counts if there is no discrepancy then obviously that is the final count that mm -hmm. we'll have then there is a certificate that the uh, returning officer has to fill up right um, how many words were valid and what was the final count that has to be signed by each and every political party agent or the candidate agent so it's finally valid that that certificate is actually given to the media it's it's, it's given to the observers it's given to the uh, candidates agent so that he can go to his candidate mm -hmm. and say look this is what you scored the final copy of that the original copy is actually taken now by the returning officer and right. there is a transmission that happens now so maybe we can talk about that all right i understand our time is now but very yeah. critical <laughs> as uh, some of the things you've mentioned as the voters go to the polling stations yes. they must remember that one of the things they need to carry with themselves is what they used to register as voters was it a passport was or it an, an ID, an ID. Yeah. and that the electronic electronic process is just really for the identification yes. the rest of it is manual they actually get to tick yeah. X or yes. a dot. Yes. Mm. Very important. So it's very important. I think the registration process was yes. electronic. Was electronic. But the actual voting process is manual. It's it manual. is still the way we used to do it. We used to do it. Yes. Which is a good process though, that the, you yes. know, the identification of a voter that when you show up as Sunil Shah mm -hmm. for them to identify this is one of the registered voters is electronic. That's it. You a know that protects the dead voters to come at the vote. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, because they, 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 they will not put their fingers there. Exactly. Or even their, their, their biometric features will not be there. Will not appear. And uh, this is what actually is making the people to have confidence with the electoral process in Kenya. Yes. It's a difficult one because we have been doing three, th 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 three elections in one day. Now we mm. are going to do six elections in, in one, one day. day. But they have a lot of confidence. Yes. And I would say the biometric voter registration has actually ended uh, to, to that. Okay. Mm. Our time is up. And I want to get your thoughts finally. I mean, it's just five days. For me, I've been sitting down and thinking, talking to my colleagues, and I'm like, really? Next Monday, we're going yeah. to the election? We'll be talking about six months, three months, uh -huh. two months. Now it's just five days to the general election, the biggest election Kenya has ever had under the what we keep calling the new constitution. It's not so very new, 2010, but yes. it's, it's fairly new, new constitution with all these guidelines. And it brings in a new face for Kenya. The governance system changes from the central form of mm -hmm. governance to, you know, it, it, it's, it's devolved now. We have mm -hmm. the counties and all that. But now we have this opportunity. I'm sure there are some Kenyans still up right now watching. What is your message? We begin with you, Reverend. There's been messages of peace going around. There have been prayers going out. And one thing is clear. Nobody wants to go back to what we witnessed in 2007, 2008. That was a dark moment for Kenya. The world is watching. We've had messages coming in from the U.S. president, from all these other people. And everybody's watching this one. It's for Kenyans to decide, of course, at the end of the day. But what is your message? What is that word right now? You speak to Kenyans and say, this is what you need to know. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Kenyans, this is what we should know. In our constitution that we promulgated, Article 1, sub Article 1 says the sovereign power lies in the hands of the Kenyans, mm. the citizens. And this sovereignty, they can exercise it either directly or through they are democratically elected representatives. It is your time now to implement this sovereignty that you have by electing the person that you would want to represent you, that you would want to delegate your sovereignty to come out and vote. 
and they vote peacefully. Thank, Thank you me. very much, Reverend. Come out and vote. Very important. You may have that vote, but you have to come out. Mm. Sunil Shah. Um, I'll just go to the end of that election day. And I think 2007, two things happened. One was the president was inaug on a, inaugurated very, you know, very quickly. Mm. This time, he has to wait for 14 days. Right. Number one. Number two, we have a reformed judiciary. So even if any of the candidates, whether it's a presidential or any of the other candidates, they have a problem, they can actually go and lodge an, uh, a petition in the Supreme Court, in the president's case, and the other ones in the high court. Right. The president's case, it has to be determined within 14 days. So people do not have to worry. If, even if there is a petition, it will be judged by the judiciary. They do not need to go and start rioting the on the roads or exactly. anything like that. Yeah. Be peaceful, let the system work. And that's why we have the new constitution, we have the new laws, we have the institutions which have now got, become more independent. They have security of tenor. Mm. They have their own decision-making processes. They, sh they are not actually influenced by uh, any other arm of the government. So it's very important for us to test the system and make sure that it works. Right. So let's be peaceful, and whatever the outcome of the elections, let's accept that and we move on from mm -hmm. there into a new devolved system, system that we will have. And that will be another intriguing process that we'll have as well. Jeff <laughs> Thank you very thank much. Thank you very Sophie. much. Thank you, thank you so much, much for coming yeah. and being with us tonight. Great insights into this election. Very good points you had to make tonight. And of course, the preamble to our constitution, we the people of Kenya, bottom line, it's about the people, those who are watching us tonight. You might have known already some of the things we've discussed tonight, but very important that we reiterated them tonight because it's just five days. I'm very excited about this election. I hope you are too. And the message that keeps being spread, and we here at KTN are very adamant and very strong on Peace must prevail. We cannot, cannot go back to the violence witness in 2007, 2008. And of course, the observers who are already in the country and the, the forces, the security forces have, you know, um, reiterated and assured that they are well prepared and geared up for this election set up around the country to ensure we have a peaceful election. The IEBC itself has completely and continuously given that assurance itself, as well as the uh, Justice Ministry, which has organized uh, this show to ensure that you as a citizenry, as the electorate, have the information you need to have ahead of the election. If you are a registered voter on Monday, you must go out, you must cast your vote, and then go home and watch as the events unfold. Of course, Katie and Kenya is your election channel. We'll be giving you all the details as they unfold live, clear, and on point right here. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. It was a pleasure to have you gentlemen. Thank you very Thank much you for your thoughts much. and insights. We appreciate them. I'm Sophia Onuno on behalf of the team that is still up late this night of the hour that made this uh, bulletin possible. Thank you for staying with us. Have a great night.